It's a windy day here in Atlantic City on the, what day is it, 28th of October, 2021. It's nice that I can get the natural light from the uh, windows here because here in the ballroom, they have windows that face the ocean, unlike the convention hall, unlike the big room on the other side of the wall here. So uh, I know a lot of people want it, so let's do a tour of the Kimball. As you know, the ballroom only seats about three or four thousand people. I forget what the seating capacity is in here. I think it's listed as three thousand. Lights are off. No way to get them on for us to tape this, but that's okay. Now, as you face the stage, it's like the Midmerlash. The left, as you face the stage, that's the left chamber, that's the right chamber, and the console, of course, is up in this kind of alcove uh, up there on one side. And there are the windows that face the ocean, which used to have film over them and they're pretty dirty. You can't see out there right now, but trust me, uh, the ocean's out there. So the stage is dead, dead ahead and uh, let's tour the chambers. Okay, we are in the right main chamber. I have to admit, I, I don't know this organ as well as the Midmerlash. But there's uh, pretty good wind pressures going on here. This is the lower level right by the door. And that is the 32 foot uh, bombard going up against the back of the chamber. And that right there is the 16 foot post horn. Yes, a 16 foot post horn. Don't see that every day. So the organ in here is basically on two levels. And it's gonna be hard to edit out all the ladder work on this one, so I guess I'll just leave it in. So on the first level, we have all these beautiful Kimball reeds. Look at this. Got a French horn, an English horn, an orchestral oboe, and look at that brass trumpet. What a beauty. Don't get much prettier than that. And if I stand back and show, it has a few notes. Oh, come on, focus, there we go. On the offsets back there, and these are uh, French horn basses right here next to me. This entire chest, I believe, is the grand mix, the uh, uh, mixture seven ranks. This entire chest, I think. Maybe, uh, no, I'm wrong. Uh, there is a, an octave major in the front. I'm looking at the little card here. Mixture seven ranks and then major 15th two foot. And if you wonder how I know that, they were thoughtful enough to put little cards up here like Midmerlash did. I don't know if that was a requirement of the job, but boy, boy does it help when you're doing chamber tour videos. This mixture, um, in, uh, w when you listen to it, it's just astonishingly brilliant and really, really nice to hear with the ensemble. Uh, it has a tierce that runs all the way through it. I think it breaks to uh, three and a fifth at C37, maybe. And it just blends in so well None of that, uh, you know, some people criticize Victorian mixtures for having tierces in them. Well, you listen to this one and it's pretty darn nice. And in case you're wondering what opus number the organ is, it's on pretty much everything. So this is the lower level of the uh, solo. And then we go up to the upper level. A little tight up here. <clears throat> so this is uh, up here. We have a post horn cello celeste tuba and tuba mirabilis. 
Typical, beautiful Kimball reeds. And then over here, next, next chest over, we have diapason major, uh, flute celeste, flute uvert, open diapason, flato dolce, viola diapason, and a clarinet in the back. So this, this chest, uh, upper right side, is basically all flues with one reed, which is a clarinet. Uh, offset chest near where I came in, which I just kind of bumped into on the way up. And then if I turn around and show, those are the tops of the 32-foot Bombard. And they have the usual Kimball uh, wooden regulator things in the top. Look at that metal thickness right there. That's, that's almost a quarter of an inch thick. Not quite mid wash thickness, but pretty good anyway. And then uh, 16 foot diaphone, or no, bombard, I'm sorry. Um, oh heck, I'll have to look up what this is. I'm getting confused because there's, there's this wood 16 here, which is a reed, and then there's the bombard down there. I'll look that up. I'll put that in the comments. I'll straighten that out. Okay, so this is the right chamber of the Kimball, and now I'm going to go over to the left chamber. All right, so this is the left chamber, which is the accompaniment. Obviously floor level here. And there is the 16-foot diaphone base over there, and a whole bunch of percussion stops. I believe that right there is the vibraphone, which just sounds fantastic. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful percussion stop. Uh, I forget what, what these offsets are. I can look it up. And that is a 16-foot string of some kind. Let's go up the ladder. First level of the accompaniment. And as you can see on the little right card there, we have a violin, violin celeste, stop flute, oboe horn, English horn, and kinura. And those are pretty easy to spot. So you have the violin, violin celeste. The stopped flute, if you look closely, is actually a whir flute. It says stop flute, but it actually has holes in the canisters. Oboe horn, English horn, and that most specific of theater organ stops, the tiny little Kinura. Right. Next chest over. Uh, we have Gemshorn, muted strings, muted diapason, Gemshorn, Celeste, and a five rank mixture on this side. Now, uh, Chuck Gibson told me that the mixture on this side is really meant to go with the strings, which is interesting. And if you look at the front there, there is a Gemshorn, and then some very, very skinny strings right there, right? And then this is the muted diapason, and th this is interesting. They have uh, leathered uh, upper lips, and they're tapered.
and then the Gemshorn Celeste, which goes with the Rankin front and the mixture. And a little, little offset chest there on a wind trunk. Okay. And then up another level. It's funny working here that this organ is only on two levels, not four or five, like the organ on the other side of the wall. Okay, so on this chest, we have a diaphonic diapason in front, viola, clarabella, viola celeste, and another straight up theater organ stop, a tibia, tibia plaza. So each chamber basically has two levels, two chests wide, basically, and then offsets. Now if I turn around, you will see Vox Humana over here on its own chest with its own tremulant. And then up here is the toy counter. There is only one toy counter in the organ and it's on this side. You've got your sleigh bells, wood block, snare, crash cymbal, etc. And that's, that's all the way up the ceiling of the chamber here. Another big wood Borden. Very generous scale. And then on this chest we have the orchestral strings two ranks and orchestral strings two ranks, which I guess, I'm not sure if that's four total or if that's two total. I guess that's two total. And then uh, English diapason, octave, mellophone, which is a big wood clarabella-ish kind of thing, which sounds wonderful out in the room. Because remember, this is on, I, I forget what pressure, 25 maybe, or 20? I'm not sure if this is a high pressure chest or not. It's higher than the uh, accompaniment. And then you have a uh, just regular old trumpet in back there. Kimball was known for their strings. Of course, you know, the Wanamaker organ has the famous string division, all of Kimball strings. Well, here you get to hear them in their, their native habitat. And boy, are they nice. And then looking back here, those are the tops of the 16-foot diaphone from the lower chamber. And then you have various flute bases and things on the other wall there, all the way back. So that's, uh, that's the Kimball. And I'm going to turn the camera off and climb out of here.